Hey guys, my name is Jeremy and let's get right into it. Okay, so you're probably already noticing a little bit of focusing issues. Now this video is gonna be completely shot with the Metabones. What is it called? Metabones. Now this video is gonna be shot completely with the Metabones Fuji X Mount to EF uh, Ultra. So it does have the speed booster inside of it. So you are getting that full frame look onto here, which is, I think it looks really good. But the biggest thing that everyone wants to know is well, how good's the autofocus and you're seeing it right now. So this lens adapter from Metabones does give you full aperture control as well as autofocus. Now I do photography as well and I've done some light testing with it, but I really wanna focus on the video continuous autofocus to see how good it is. So I'm shooting the video right now on the Canon 24 to 70 Mark II lens. This whole video is gonna be shot wide open because I think that's where the lens will have to work the hardest to gain focus because the depth of field is the shallowest. Um, and also I think it just looks the best. That's why I bought it because I wanted to shoot wide open. So that's how I'm gonna test it. What this speed booster does is it widens your field of view and it gives you an extra stop of light. So to find out the 35 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length and aperture, uh, there's this website that does it for you. It's called mmcalc.com. We'll go there, choose a sensor size, scroll down. So the Fuji is gonna be a 1.53X crop roughly. Boom. So we'll go back to calculator. So, okay, so let's check this out, guys. So we have this right here. It's a 0 0.71, 0 0.71 times 24, which equals 17.04. So that's gonna be our equivalent, right? But keep in mind that 17 millimeters still has a crop on it. So we're gonna go ahead and find out what the equivalent 35 is. 17.04 and the aperture, which goes down to F2 since it's boosted. Calculate, ba -ba -ba -bam, boom. So it comes down to a 26.07 millimeter to F3.06. So very close to a 24 2.8 full frame equivalent. So let's find out what the 70 millimeter equivalent comes down to with the adapter. I know it's confusing. So 70 times 0.71 equals 49.7, okay. So we take 49.07 with the aperture of F2, calculate it, boom, goes down to a 75.08 millimeter F3.06. So there you go, you're getting around a 26 millimeter to 75 millimeter F3, let's say, um, lens on your Fuji with the adapter. So there you go, that's the focal range and aperture you can expect. The autofocus actually changes from different focal lengths. So at the wide angle of this lens, uh, the 24 to 70, it's not that good. It's honestly kind of, well, you can see it's, it's, it's just not that good. But as you zoom in, it gets better and better. And I think that's because it has less elements to move. It doesn't have to move that focus ring quite as much. There's less hunting. So this is gonna be the setup for the face tracking test, just to give you guys a little variation in terms of, you know, no hat, see what sun looks like. Settings are 24 millimeters. 24 millimeters F2 ISO 640, because we're in F-Log. So I'll be walking from about 20 feet away from the camera to about three feet, so you can gotta see how good the focus racks. All right, so same test, but now with the Fuji 16 to 55 2.8. Only that sucks about this is that if you have a mount on here, you have to take it off because you can't take the actual lens off because it gets stuck on the body. So keep that in mind if you have to switch out lenses a lot or different mounts, you can't easily swap it. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's see what the Fuji looks like.
All right, so let's do the gimbal test to see how well the camera does when it tracks something going forward and going back. Let's see how good a focus racks. Back to me. Back to me. So not that smooth at 70. Let's go back to 50. All right, back at 50. Let's go to 35. Come on. Wow, that took forever. And again. And all the way back to 24. So obviously uh, it got progressively worse as we went wider and wider. Um, I'm not sure what the exact issue is with that, but it's just not as smooth at the wide angle. So as you can see, the lens performance changes based off of the focal length, at least with this particular lens. So if you have this lens on around, this is kind of something you can expect from it. And let me show you my ghetto setup so you can see how well this is working. All right, so as you can see, um, you know, I still you still get the eye that's tracking and everything like that. You just still get that pulsing that happens, which is kind of, you know, annoying, but it does track your face. Even if you zoom in and stuff the you know, let's go back. Let's go into 35. All right. So now we're at 35. You still see the square around my face. So it's still tracking my entire face. The issue comes down to how it's translating to the lens. So the autofocus and everything is still there. It's just, I think they needed a couple of firmware updates to kind of iron out those kinks. I'm gonna go ahead and toss in the 50 mil 1.2 so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, so this is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 L. On the camera right now, it's at 50 millimeters and the aperture is F2. Um, so you guys can kind of see what the performance looks like. It's actually pretty good. And I think this lens is about equal with the 24 to 70 at this focal length. Um, so, you know, take that how you will but you know, it seems to track my face pretty good. I still have a little box on my face, but close to the camera. And then if I go back and go forward and I'll go back one more time. Let's see how it racks focus. And back to me. Okay, so again, this is not the smoothest thing to rack focus. If you're looking at, if you're looking for, you know, Canon dual pixel autofocus, no, it's not that level. If you're looking for Sony autofocus, not that level. Again, don't expect that because that's not what it is. I do want to show you guys how cool this lens looks when it's fully open. Again, with the speed booster, you're getting an extra stop of light. So this lens, even though it's a 1.2, it stops all the way down to f 0.9 which is super cool so i'm going to show you that right now all right so this is the canon 50 millimeter 1.2 l lens at f 0.9 thanks to the speed booster um 
super shallow depth of field, which looks beautiful. Again, you're getting that full frame look on the Fuji X-T3, which I absolutely love. And uh, yeah, the autofocus is definitely not gonna be as good here. I don't know how usable it is. You know, left to right, boom, boom, boom. Like going back a little bit. How are how we, how we tracking? We're tracking pretty good. Hmm. Not sure, maybe it's not as good as, uh, obviously it's gonna be hard to track, but let's see how it racks focus. And back to me. And rack focus. And back to me. So these are just my quick thoughts on this adapter. Um, I do wanna do some more testing on to see if it's actually gonna work out for me. Uh, I'm switching from the 1DX Mark II to something a little more compact. Uh, I do like the mirrorless form factor, plus I love the video quality of the Fuji and the colors. So I'm hoping that this works. Um, I think with future firmware updates, this adapter has a lot of potential. Um, I know that it does work with IBIS now with any lens. Uh, so if you've got an X-T4, you got IBIS with any lens from Canon, which is super dope. But yeah, if you got this far, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And let me know in the comments stuff you'd like to see with this uh, setup, um, test you'd like to see, um, image quality, lenses. Just let me know and I'll see if I can make it happen. But thank you guys and I'll see you next time. So to find out the equivalent focal length, focal length, yeah. So to find out the equivalent 30 blah, that does the calculations for you, there's this cool website that, so